Good morning everybody. This video is actually going to be even less prepared than usual. Um, I didn't intend doing a video this morning. L last night um, I just went to bed really early. Uh, I was so angry. I was apoplectic with, with rage with what's going on. Um, and I knew if I got, went on my Facebook groups uh, I knew I said what I wanted to say. I'll get banned left, right and centre and end up saying things that probably weren't appropriate. But as we all know, we thought Manchester was bad enough. And on Saturday evening, we have these filth, three filth, come out and murder even more British people. Saying this is for our families, this is for Allah. What a bag of shit. What an absolute bag of shit. Yes, I understand that uh, in some of these countries that we have been at war with, that there has, there have been innocent people killed, uh, and and nobody can argue that fact. But what these people are doing is they are intentionally targeting civilians, intentionally targeting people who can't defend themselves. There is absolute malice in everything they do. And this, oh it's for Allah, it's a, for my children, is just a damn excuse. I'm going to try and stay calm. Um, I've spoken to a lot of people who I know over the past few days. As you know, um, I've run British Warrior Within, which is a group that is growing really quite well now. And we will be attending events, hopefully as a group. Um, it'll take some doing, because they're widespread all over the country. Uh, but I'm also members of Facebook groups like we all are and I speak to a lot of people and it appears that maybe I've been getting it wrong um, in, in certain things that I've been doing, certain things I've been saying I'm not sure yet um, but I've listened to what other people have had to say and I've taken it on board I've been saying is we need to get into them, we need to have them, we need to have a militia, we need to start fighting them now and beating the crap out of them like they're doing to us. And we need to do it now, this second. Whilst I still believe that to a certain degree, what I'm being told by other people is no, we need to get everybody on our side. We need to take the time to inform those that just don't know what's going on, that have been ignorant to the facts for so long. And when we've got the country behind us, then we will be able to, to defeat Islam. And on this point, I would have to agree. Um, the only thing is I've always thought it's a bit idealistic, especially where the mainstream media, up until this point, haven't even been covering anything but now all of a sudden it's as if they've realized we can't hide this anymore and everything's starting to come out on the mainstream media now they're still very guarded in what they say except for Piers Morgan who do you know what I love that bloke he says things that annoys me but at least he says them do you know what I mean doesn't mean he's always right but what he says, he's a bit like me, he speaks from the heart. I thought he'd actually been taken off the TV and I saw him this morning, so I don't know if it's just a short suspension or whether they had a change of heart. So what, what, what do we do? Um, it leaves me in a bit of a conundrum, really, because I want to get out there and fight. Um, it's probably quite good at the moment that it's not happening at this moment because my foot's still giving me hell and I 
as I said before, I chop the damn thing off and go hopping out there if I have to. Um, but what do we do? What do you think? What do you people think? Do we get all these... I try not to insult them because insulting is not going to help, is it? Do we get all these liberals or people that are in the centre that don't really understand what danger Britain is in? Do we get them on side and then fight Islam? Or do we, do we fight them now? I think at the very least we've got to start giving them some intimidation back. Um, because what they're doing at the moment is they're thinking they've got free reign to do whatever they want and we won't do anything. Right, all three of those scum that attacked Britons on Saturday, they were all killed. Which is great, that's three less of them. And uh, I just hope they knew, in, maybe in that second when they were crossing over, if there is a life after death, hope they had that realisation that they weren't going to paradise, that they weren't going to 72 virgins, and that it's all a lie. I just hope that's what they got as their, their last living thought. I may seem a bit downbeat today, and yeah, I am. I'm. I'm caught in what direction to go now. The, the next thing which is, there's no arguments that we've got to do, is uh, a peaceful protest for the justice for Chelsea on Saturday. I'll promote it till it drives you mad. Justice for Chelsea, 10th of June, this Saturday, in Sunderland, at the, it's at the Charlton Arms or whatever, it's a pub called the Charlton. I called it the Chelsea the other day, I got it confused with Chelsea's name. I apologise. But it's called the Charlton. Um, they're meeting there from 11 o'clock. Uh, the march isn't moving off till 1. So, for people like me, who live a long way away, it gives you a bit more time to get up there, but I'm, I'm probably going up on a Friday anyway, because... That's too long a drive to go up and back the same day. I still have a full, almost all spaces in my car at the moment. Um, I thought I had one person, but as, again, I, I will repeat myself. They haven't got back in contact with me, so I assume they, they're not going and they're not going to let me know. Um, I'm coming from Eastbourne area and I'll be going through Brighton and then straight up on the M25 and the A1M, I think it is. So if there's anywhere on the way that you wanted picking up, but don't forget I am staying the night. So you'd either need to be staying the night or able to get a lift back. So it's going to be a lonely old journey on my own. I have to listen to the radio. So I'd like your opinions. I know I've got people that watch these videos now. I've had some lovely comments from people and I really appreciate them. Uh, I had one from Janine the other day. Thank you, Janine. And I said thank you to a couple of people in the past. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm just totally befuzzled by the lack of reaction that we're giving. And I don't know whether it's right or wrong. I don't know whether these guys I'm talking to, who I fully respect their opinions, whether they're right or wrong. Some of them are all for, let's go get them, let's have them. Um, but I suppose the only thing that you do have then is you can be targeting the wrong people. Because these filthy animals, the killers, they're the sort... They'll just go and hide and blend in somewhere. And you probably, we, we wouldn't find them anyway. So we'd probably end up just having a go at... I, I don't like saying peaceful Muslims because I'm not so sure that Islam is a peaceful religion in any shape or form. Um, 
I think people who are peaceful with, that are Muslims would rather not follow Islam, if I'm perfectly honest, but are too scared to get out of that cult. Well, I'm still, still going to try and arrange a rally outside the East London Mosque in Tower Hamlets on the 1st of July. It will need a lot of people, because you can be sure there'll be a lot of Muslims there when they find out what's going on. It will need a lot of people, and we're going there to intimidate them. We're going there to make them feel unsafe. We're going there to make them feel how we're being made to feel every single day, every time we go out on a street these days. Is a van going to come ploughing through us? Our men going to jump out the back of that van and start stabbing us randomly. You need to be intimidated. You need to know what it's like. You need to have fear. Because then you might actually start putting up the names of the people that are doing it to us. And one thing that is a fact that they don't even try to deny even on the mainstream media, is that a lot of these mosques, not all, a lot of these mosques, are funded by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, and they are funded to preach the Wahhabi style of Islam, which is the most evil and vile form of Islam that there is. So these mosques should be shut down. They should be bulldozed and should be made an example of that we are, we won't put up with this in Britain. And I'm sure that the security services know exactly know which mosques these are. And it's my opinion that the East London Mosque is one of them. One that I know is, is Didsbury. Hopefully, I don't even know where Didsbury is. I'm assuming it's up near Rochdale area or something like that. The last thing that I need to talk about this morning is um, the fact that we should be able to defend ourselves. There's been a lot of arguments the last week or so. I've had big arguments with people. We have the right to defend ourselves. It's in our constitution. It's never been taken away. They tried taking it away with acts and statutes, but they've never actually taken away that right for us to defend ourselves with whatever we can afford. So basically, if you can afford a bow and arrow, you get a bow and arrow. If you can afford a 50 cal machine gun, you get a 50 cal machine gun. A bit more contention is whether you are allowed to take that from your home or whether it should be kept for home defence. That is more contentious. But I would like to ask the government one question. If you was out on the street and a guy charged out of a car and came charging up to you brandishing a knife and he was going to kill you, would you rather know that you've got a knife yourself and you've got a 50-50 chance of saving yourself or would you rather that oh no that's not how we British do it and know that you're dead who are you to say that we cannot defend ourselves who are you to say that oh no that's our job but then you don't do it you can't have an armed officer walk around with every single person in this country. Imagine blinging Diane Abbott trying to work out the wages of 65 million coppers. We must have the right to be able to carry something to defend ourselves with. If that 
is abused by an individual, then they should go to prison. But that shouldn't stop the rest of us from having the ability to defend ourselves. How many people last night would have had a chance of surviving if they'd had a weapon to defend themselves? All of them, all of them would have had a chance. As it was, none of them had a chance. And that's down to you, government. You took arms from us. You took them from us illegally. I know it's not a great position to be in, but it's how it is. We are at, a, we are at war. It may be a slow burning war, but we're at war. And who at war walks around unarmed? We are capable of defending ourselves, but you stop us. And this has got to be wrong. Unless you can guarantee my safety 24 hours a day, seven days a week, then I have the right to defend myself against attack. And I have the right to defend my property and I have the right to defend my country. And you need to do something about this and you need to do something about it now. Don't you understand that the little yobs that go around tooled up anyway, they don't care about your laws. They carry guns, they carry knives anyway. The criminal element already do it. We're talking about the ordinary people. The ordinary people who want to defend themselves. I know it would be difficult say in a nightclub they would have to you'd have to hand them in as you went in so that, that's the only way you either have a sense to not take them with you to the nightclub or there should be somewhere where you can hand them in and as you leave the nightclub pick them up again just like you do your coat until this war is over we have to have the right to defend ourselves. Okay, that, that's, that's about it for today. Um, yet again, my sympathies and sorrow go out to those killed and injured on London Bridge and the surrounding areas. I'm getting fed up of having to say it. That's not meant detrimentally, obviously, to those victims. It's, I'm getting fed up that it keeps happening. The Manchester concert last night was, I think that's why I went to sleep. My, my wife wanted to watch it. And what's it going to achieve? It just gives you a false sense of security. Oh, we're all safe together in here. We've got about 15,000 armed police outside. Isn't that great? How about the walk home? How about the journey home? How safe did you feel then? Probably not as safe. Okay. Please like this if you like this really massively depressing video. It's not depressing, I'm just very thoughtful and a little bit confused at the moment, which I'm sure you all are. It's a very confusing time. Um, please subscribe if you like the type of video that I'm doing. And I will try and keep you updated with opinions, ideas, this noisy little twat above me will try and talk louder than I can, which he's very good at doing. So, let's hope the next one doesn't happen.
I think it will, just a case of where. I'll be up there at Sunderland if you want to come and get me. We'll all be there.